Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. In this tutorial um, I'll give you an introduction to the static modifier. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select menu and then Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the static modifier introduction. The static keyword can be applied to variables, methods, blocks, and nested classes. Don't worry about blocks and nested classes yet, I will cover them in future tutorials. In a nutshell, when the static modifier is applied to a member, that member is shared between all objects. In addition, there is no need to create an instance of a class to access a static member, but you can if you want to. The static modifier has many purposes, so the best way to begin explaining what static does is to apply it to a, a simple variable and use a hypothetical example. Let's just suppose we won a multi-million dollar grant for a really important government study to determine if there is really a 50-50 chance that a coin will land on either heads or tails. Now, the specs for the grant require a minimum of 1 million flips of a coin to be performed. The best approach will be to hire a bunch of people to flip coins and press either a heads button or a tails button depending on the results of the flip. We'll need a high-tech workstation. Table, chair, a coin, uh, of course, and then a heads button, tails button. For every worker that will connect to a central computer that will tally two competing values, heads and tails. The key to our brilliant new technology will be the static keyword applied to an instance variable. Oh, but wait, I just stated that a static member is shared between objects, and we know that an instance variable is unique to an object. Well, by applying the static keyword to an instance variable, it becomes a class variable that is shared between all objects. And then I've said, let's put up a help wanted on add on Craigslist and write some code. Let's come down here to the code. Let's highlight all this. So like control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move the browser off screen here. On my desktop, I got a shortcut to the command prompt. Um, if you don't, you can create one really easy by right clicking, going new, shortcut, type in CMD, next, and finish, right? And the first thing we're going to do when we open up the command prompt is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command, and you should see all this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory with the MD command called Java, and I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. Now, the Java folder is my working directory, so that's where I create all my tutorial stuff out of there. Now, today I'm going to make a directory called, um, ooh, let's see, what am I going to call this one? Good question. Static intro. I'm going to change directories to static intro folder and notepad static intro.java. Okay. Static intro.java is the name of my source code file, which contains two classes the static intro class and the class flip it. Now, in the class flip it, it looks like what we have right here in the highlighted section would be a normal instance variable, right? and it would be a default access package private basic type there and I've applied the static modifier to it now that all this basically becomes a class variable it's no longer an instance variable it's a class variable okay so we have two class variables inside of the flip it class now up here in the static intro class and the main method entry point um, first comment well only three people answer my Craigslist ad Bob Mary and Larry they each put in a hard day at the office with the following results. So here's Bob's work, right? And we can do this sort of syntax right here, right? Flip it dot heads plus plus. So we can add one to the heads um, class variable inside of the flip it class. So we get directly access to the class variable. So right down here, we've got the class name and then the variable. So we can use class name dot variable and add one to it. So that's the direct access of a static, um, a static variable there. 
So he got two heads, two tails, and a heads. Now Larry, Larry loves objects and refuses to embrace direct access. So what he, cho what he chose to do is he wanted to uh, use the, the new um, operator to create an instance of the flip it class, right? And then use the dot operator to set the, the heads value and add one to it, okay? So Java give us, gives us the ability to, for direct access on um, these class variables or using instance, creating an instance of it and accessing it that way, right? Now, even though we're creating an instance of it, what would normally be a, a instance variable, right? Is still, in fact, you know, considered a class variable because it's shared between everything, right? So the value of, of heads will just keep incrementing as we add one to it here, regardless if we create four new objects out of it or if we access it, you know, five times like we did up here. Okay. And then finally, here's Mary's work. She flipped it six times, got four heads, two, uh, or four tails, and two heads. And let's see, then I display to the console this string little right here, plus this string, and then on the next line here, this string's little head, heads total, plus, and then directly reading the value of the heads class variable. And then just for uh, you know demonstration purposes here, I read the value of a new instance of the dot tails class variable. All right, let's go ahead and save this, compile it. And I'm going to clear my screen here in Java to run the Java virtual machine and let's invoke the static intro class. Okay, so our grand total for our first day is heads total 7, tails total 8. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, get rid of that, and just leave you with a couple final thoughts here. So the subject of the static keyword is actually quite extensive. Uh, I will be covering various rules and ways to use the static keyword in future tutorials. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.